Good morning, folks. If you weren't around yesterday, The Daily Show had a dominatingly top story on Earth's magnetic reversal and extinction events. Took a deeper look at it in the evening, and that evening video is linked below this one. But right now, let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was very quiet. Solar flaring and eruptive activity have taken a number of days off. Now, the coronal holes remain mostly confined to the polar regions. The incoming active region is really an inactive region. No proper sunspots exist anymore at this aged grouping. Right now, the plasma filaments between the arching fields present the larger eruption threat, larger than the active region itself. Solar wind here. Telemetry has now been slightly decreasing intensity for two days. We are seeing a minor density fluctuation in the plasma stream this morning, but Earth's magnetic field, all quiet as of now. Let's go to flooding. USGS flood stage maps here for the US. It is record setting, deadly already. And with the newly breached levees, some regions could be inundated for a month. As you can see in this run of tonight and into tomorrow, the flood potential is going to continue from the eastern side of the Rockies down into the central states. Eyes open. Let's start the science news aesthetically. M59 is one of the most odd elliptical galaxies because it doesn't behave like the old timer most ellipticals do. It's showing signs of youthful star production near the core. We've got a bit of solar climate forcing up next. Now it's the quiet sun electric penetration mechanisms and the interplay into the global electric circuit. It doesn't take massive solar blasts to be relevant. The solar wind and ambient fields of the solar system directly couple with Earth's field and create considerable plasma exchanges peaking at the polar latitudes and integrating into the up and down currents of the global electric circuit. Now in that same vein, but about 10 steps more advanced, comes the characterization of space energy fluctuations as wave packages. Waves that come and move together, often generated by a similar source or coupled along a line of sight and motion. Essentially, this helps us understand that we build detectors for specific things. The data we get back is highly specific. But the wave packages that administrate the electrodynamic transaction between Sun and Earth systems is highly complex. It's just not that easy. Let's round out with cosmology here. First, the great Pico 60 experiment has taken sensitivity more than an order of magnitude higher. Their chamber is bigger, and after literally years of full tank exposure, we still have no dark matter particles. I know, someone give them $50 million to keep trying. Governments? Who's hungry? We hope you're in the mood for Asian food because the plasma universe counterpoint made to the dark matter search today is coming out of Asia and it's the recognition of electromagnetism where it eludes cosmology currently. First, the quantum electrodynamics of major supposed mergers must begin to be taken into account. And while this seems logical, it is also about as easy as unraveling God's DNA from the back of a Cheerios box, so they've ignored that math that supercomputers can barely handle right now. But more importantly, the paper is suggesting that even in the weak cosmological field setup, by the way, it's likely moderate to strong in reality, but even in the weak one, they set up persistent electric currents throughout the cosmos, which complement that paper last week about cosmic length magnetic fields, and this is the source of the infrared hyperconductivity of the universe. Another reminder, the fight between the observers and the science titans at Harvard and the American Astronomical Society is over. The number one geophysics journal on Earth cleaned up the pieces of our initial debunking and molded them into Thor's hammer. Magnetic reversals cause extinction events. Link to that video is below. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.